Hi friends, today we're going to play with uh, GitHub workflows and we're going to see how we can shape a pipeline for our applications and also we're going to see how we can reuse workflows and how we can trigger workflows that live in another repo. Because there are all these concepts, I created a demo pipeline that tries to represent what is typically in a, in a pipeline where you build your package and you deploy your applications and you do some testing and etc. etc. So let's have a look at the pipeline first. So this pipeline has a number of steps. As you can see, uh, the workflow has uh, quite a few jobs. There is a build job that is um, triggering then another job that is dockerize. Then we have an end to end testing job that is triggered. As you can see, there is a dependency between this dockerize and uh, a provision infra. Then we also have another job that is for uh, um, security uh, scanning and is triggered is a dependency after the build. And then what else? We have a promotion job, a destroy, destroy infra job that is triggered after we execute the end-to-end -end test. And then we have a trigger dependencies job that will trigger the dependencies. So now let me explain bit by bit. So the build job is a job that lives in the same workflow definition. Then what we do, we invoke a dockerized workflow that lives in another workflow definition. So we're going to see how we can do this. And then we have the execution of end-to-end -end test. And then we have the promotion that uh, also lives in another workflow and we have then the um, trigger dependencies that lives in another workflow in another repo. So now let me show you the code one by one. So, so before looking at the code for the workflows, I need to tell you that we have three individual repositories. One is the application one repo, then we have the application two, and then we have shared workflows. Application one and application two are representing two different applications living in the same organization, and shared workflows contains only workflow definitions that are supposed to be shared. So now let's go back to the, to the code. We have a workflow that is uh, the SDLC for the application one, and we have a number of jobs. So the first one is build. And uh, after we execute the build, we have the static application security testing uh, that, as you can see, this one is using a workflow. So this one is a workflow that is already defined in, and is coming from shared workflows. So now if we look at the shared workflows repo, we have this sast.yaml and the thing to notice is that this sast.yaml has the on workflow call. So the on workflow call is one way to reuse the workflow. So in, in this way, we are simply telling the workflow that can be reused and can be invoked by other um, uh, repos. So to make this invocation possible from another repo, we need to do something. So we need to go under shared workflows, settings, and then for the actions, general. So at the bottom, we have this access. So this one, allows us to access the workflows that are living inside repositories that live in the same organization. So workflows in other repositories that are part of out of DevOps organization can access the action and reusable workflow in this repository. Access is allowed only from private repository. So this is required, otherwise you're gonna have an error when you try to uh, execute it from uh, the application one. So going back to the application one, the other step that we have is the dockerize step. So the dockerize step works in a similar way to the SAST, but as you can see, this one lives under the application one and not under the shared workflows. So for this one, we can simply invoke it and reuse the workflow. The other thing to notice when we reuse a workflow is that we can pass inputs. So these inputs are defined in the workflow definition itself. So if I open the dockerize under the application one repo, we can see that we have on workflow call, this is to reuse the workflow. And then we have the list of inputs. We can have up to 10 inputs. You can specify the type and you can also specify if there are required or not. And if there are default values and uh, add the description and so on and so forth. So I'll try to put down all the links to the documentation, but it's very easy to Google uh, this once you know how they're called. So now going back to the build, what we have, we have our end to end. This one has a dependency on two jobs, dockerize and provision infra. And then what we are going to do is the promote invocation. So 
this is slightly different than this interesting. So, so this is not reusing a workflow, but is invoking a workflow that exists in the same repo. So as you can see, what we are doing here is doing a call request against the GitHub API. And this is specifically for the, um, to dispatch a workflow. And in a similar way, we can pass the, the inputs, but as you can see now, we are using JSON. So this is documented in here. So there is create workflow dispatch event. This is used to trigger workflow that lives in the same repo or in an external repo. One thing to notice here is that we need to be authorized. Because this workflow lives in the same repo, we can use the GitHub token, which is an environment variable that is exposed automatically when we run the workflow. And as a consequence of this call, what we're gonna have is an invocation of a workflow for the promotion. So if I go in actions, what we're gonna see is that GitHub action bot is promoting service one. So this is the actual execution of the promotion job. And the promotion jobs lives under promote YAML in the application one repo. So this is simply, we want to keep isolated the workflow and we want to get triggered by external workflows that live in the same repo. So as you can see, this is now not triggered on workflow call, but on workflow dispatch. This is very similar in terms of syntax and inputs, but there's a different meaning. So this one is a way to trigger the workflow and execute the workflow in isolation. So not as part of the caller workflow, but as its own workflow. So now if we go back to the main workflow, we have the last type of trigger. This is still doing the workflow dispatch, but now the workflow lives in another repo. So as you can see, we are invoking a workflow that lives in the repo application two. And the other difference you need to notice here is that the application two requires the path, so a personal access token to execute the call. And so I created the path by uh, going under settings and from settings, developer settings and personal access token, tokens, generate new token, so the permissions that you need are workflow and this automatically will select the repo and then you can generate the token. So once you create the access token and you store it as a secret, you can do the call in the same way we have done it before. And uh, let's have a look at the code just for completeness, but it's very similar. So if we go under application two, we have again on workflow dispatch and not on workflow call. And then we have the list of inputs that we expect. And then the execution of the job is standard way of defining the jobs with the, with the steps. We can also see that every time we run the trigger dependencies, this one is invoking the application to action. And if we go in application to under actions, we can see that this was triggered and on workflow dispatch, and we can see the, the jobs triggered. So hope this was useful. I'm gonna leave all the links and to the documentation and to the code snippets down in the description. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have issues with this. I'll try to help and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.